Uh, thank you, Diane, and thank you all of you for being here today. And uh, Marie, it's great to be here with you uh, as someone who has championed this issue and cared about it for as long as you have. Uh, I'm happy to be on your team, quite frankly. And uh, let, let me just share with you, uh, I'm in the Senate, so we tend to t talk a lot longer than those in the House, but I'll try to be brief. Uh, you know, uh, as some of you may know, uh, Congress recently reauthorized uh, the McKinney-Vento Homeless Act. Uh, the McKinney in the McKinney-Vento uh, Homeless Act was my father, Stuart McKinney. Uh, and as a congressman from Connecticut, I used to spend a lot of time uh, as a kid traveling around the 4th uh, District with my dad. It was, quite frankly, it was the only way I get to see him, because he was in Washington during the week. Uh, and uh, when I turned uh, 16 and got my driver's license, he would actually have me drive him either to the train station or to the airport when he'd be flying back to uh, Washington or to pick him up. Uh, and sometimes going into uh, the New York airports, we would travel on roads and see uh, empty buildings, you know, no windows. Uh, and he would visibly, he actually, I could drive, but he actually drove. And he would be shaking the steering wheel uh, in frustration uh, that there are people, you know, our brothers, our sisters, mothers, fathers, neighbors, who don't have a home, uh, and yet there are homes that are vacant. And how government could never realize and get their act together uh, to provide housing uh, for our neighbors and our friends and our citizens. Uh, and he taught me very early on uh, that it is our right as human beings to have a place we call home. Uh, and I live in Fairfield, Connecticut. I've grown up in Fairfield, Connecticut. You see a picture of Jarvis Court there, and there's Operation Hope, so that's perfect timing in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, Megan Lowney, who's here, who used to run Operation Hope. Uh, they were turning away people at a homeless shelter in Fairfield, Connecticut. Fairfield is one of the more affluent towns in our world. Um, this isn't a problem that belongs to Hartford or Bridgeport. Uh, it's a problem that belongs to all of us as a nation. Uh, it is a national disgrace that we have people that don't have a place to call home. Uh, and I realize this is my 10th year in the legislature. I was lucky enough to go down to Washington, D.C. Uh, to testify before Congress on the reauthorization of the Homeless Act. Um, and that was uh, a wonderful experience for me in many ways. Even the bad parts were wonderful. Uh, the bad parts were I realized that there is so much dense partisanship in Washington uh, that neither party uh, can put aside sort of their differences to work together, uh, that we're going to have to do more here in Connecticut to do it for ourselves. Uh, let's not rely on Washington, D.C. Uh, let's do it ourselves. Uh, I also realized that after nine years of caring about this issue and working with people like Marie Kirkley Bay, uh, I need to be a little more vocal. Uh, I need to be a little bit louder. Uh, I need to talk about how it's no longer acceptable to say we understand there's a problem and not do enough to solve it. Uh, so I have said uh, since uh, my day in Washington, D.C., uh, that it's not uh, John McKinney's plan, uh, it's your plan. It's what you've all done and all, what you've all worked for, what you've all fought for on the front lines. Uh, I just want to be one of your loud voices here in the Capitol. Uh, and let me just say it's not even about 650 units. It's about making sure that next year and for the next 10 years, we get 650 units. It's about making sure that we as a government make that commitment. Uh, the developers are out there. Uh, we're turning away developments. We're turning away supportive housing units because we don't have enough dollars to go with it. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. We spend a lot of money in government. Not all of it is spent well. But when we actually have an opportunity to get more supportive housing built, but we don't fund it, we're making a huge mistake. So. Uh, my message to you is uh, come up today, come up tomorrow, email your legislators, let them know that this problem uh, can be solved. Uh, we're used to talking about how we can maintain homelessness, uh, spend money on programs, uh, whether it's through emergency shelters or otherwise, to maintain a problem. Tell your legislator that we can solve the problem, that with permanent supportive housing, funding support services to get people going. And I wasn't here, I apologize to hear Esther speak, but that's, that's it right there in one person. We've heard that story in so many different towns and cities across the state of Connecticut. That's what permanent supportive housing can do. That's what services can do. Um, and really when you think about it, housing is central to everything we do in life. You can't hold a job down if you don't have a place to call home. You can't go to school and become educated if you don't have a place to call home. 
A mother can't educate her children in an emergency shelter or worse, on a park bench. How can you maintain, we all need health care. How can you maintain health care if you're living in an emergency shelter? Uh, so everything centers around having that place to call home. That's what is the stabilizing factor in all of our lives. And I, I woke up today in my home with my wife and three kids, and I'll go home tonight to them and every night. Uh, and I hope I'll never forget how lucky I am to have that. So I really want to thank you for lending your voices and allowing politicians like me to speak on your behalf. It's, it's your fight. You're doing the hard work. You're doing the real work. Uh, we're just here to help you. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we as a state of Connecticut will get the message. We'll say that homelessness is unacceptable. We need to solve it. And we need to make not just a commitment to 650 units. We need to make a commitment over the next 10 years to get as many supportive housing units as are necessary to find a home for everyone in the state of Connecticut. Thank you.